Hi everybody, welcome back to the Zenith Super Duty build and my quick little update video for you. I'm going to start off by showing you the coolest thing that I've got done in the last couple days. And that of course would be mounting a Sidewinder missile to the bottom of the wing. I have a aluminum mount that I made. I just cut up some square tubes and I had them welded together. And you can see I have a, one of those little rubber seat spacers that go on the Zenith seats. I have those in between the mount and the wing and it works pretty well. It looks good on there. Imagine going to a pancake breakfast and seeing this airplane sitting on a ramp. That is pretty cool. If you guys remember in the previous episode, I had an issue on the Dynon screen with it indicating opposite with the pitot heat. So when the heat was on, it would say off. When it was off, it would say on. It was really easy to do, but I figured out how to change that in the Dynon. All right, I will show you how I did that. So we'll turn the power on here and we'll let the Dynon screen boot up. And while the Dynon's booting up, I wanna show you this Garmin GPS too, because guys, if you're debating between Dynon and Garmin, go with a Dynon. They are just so much better than Garmin. So you can see on the, the Garmin up here, database not found. There's obviously no database in it because there's a card that goes in here with a database. And of course, Garmin didn't even include the card so there's no database in the GPS. And then uh, if I go up to map, you know, it, it can't find a position or anything. If there's no background or anything because there's no database in it. So I have to figure out how to get a card and probably spend more money and get a database for the stupid Garmin GPS. But now we have the Dynon booted up. If you hit the last two buttons on the Dynon, it goes into the setup menu. And I'll see if I can show you this. You can scroll down in each of these just by using this little knob right here. And I'm gonna go over to the EMS setup and then just click the knob. And then I will go down to sensor setup on the left there. I'll click it and then go down to pitot heat. Click it again. There we go. And now if I scroll down to right here, where it says on, see it right there, let me focus here. Before that said off, and all you have to do is just go uh, type in here. You can type in anything you want, um, but I just put on. Be previously it had off. And then if you go down here to, to range two, it says uh, off, and that used to say on. So basically what I did was I just switched those two and now, if we exit out of here, you can see the little pedo heat indication right here. It's off, the light is off. And if I turn on the pedo heat, you can see the light comes on and now it says on. So now everything is correct. And I did test it also. And that pedo heat, <laughs> sorry, it's not focusing, but the pedo heat does work. Well, the next thing I want to show you are these two plastic pieces here, which are floorboards for the back seat in the Super Duty. So uh, they are on the kitplaneenthusiast.com website now. This is how they come. And they do require just a very minor trimming. You can see on this one here, this is how I've trimmed it. And it's just trimmed to fit around a little bit of the structure that's, that's in the back of the fuselage. But you'll see that it has these channels here. And this is for the, the uh, fuel hose that goes in the back of the fuselage. Now, these are made by North American Aerospace. And they are making a, another version that doesn't have this bump right here. So if you don't have your fuel lines there, if you have maybe like the Viking engine where they run their fuel lines a little bit differently or however you ran your fuel lines, you can, you can order this set here or the set without the bump. The set without the bump isn't listed on the website yet, but it'll be coming shortly. Uh, these are super nice, they're lightweight, uh, and you can see it's like a double layer here. So you have this bottom layer here, and then bonded on top is this flat layer, and uh, it's super strong. They're lightweight and super strong. Now, if you're going to have somebody in the back of your airplane, if you are going to put a seat back there, the floor is basically just the bottom skin of the airplane. 
and you really don't want somebody standing on here, or if they have a rock in their shoe and they put pressure on here, and now you have a dent in your skin. It's this, you know, this is the skin of the airplane. It, it's, in my opinion, I guess, it's not really meant to be a floor to where somebody could stand on here uh, and, and get into the airplane. You can use plywood in here, that would work, but plywood is really heavy and kind of ugly. Uh, so we have these custom pieces that fit right in there, and I'm gonna put it in and show you what it looks like. All right, guys, I'm gonna try to do this one-handed because there's no good way to set up the camera on a tripod, <laughs> but these are actually really easy to go in. Might not look like it, because like I said, I'm just doing it one-handed, but it just, uh, There we go. It fits right in like that. And you can see this bump here. That fuel line is under here. So if somebody is back here with their foot back here, they're not kicking your fuel line. So everything's kind of hidden below there. And you got a nice solid floor for people to rest their feet. I have been working a little bit firewall forward. This is the throttle right here. Goes back here. I have it clamped here with a clamp. And then there's just a little spacer here to, to hang it down. And what I'm probably going to do is take this off and put just a little bit longer of a spacer on here. You can see this has a little bit of a bow to it, which is okay, but I'm going to make this spacer just a, maybe about a half inch longer. And then we'll have a straight shot where it comes out of the firewall all the way up to the throttle arm. And where it comes out of the firewall, let me see if I can zoom in there. I have a little eyeball socket that I got from Aircraft Spruce that is perfect. Well, it's, that's what it's designed for, but it works perfectly to have that throttle cable come out. You know, one of the things I kind of learned from, from building this airplane is some of the things that I would do differently. And I think what I'd recommend to you guys, if you haven't got this far yet, or if I was building this airplane again, is I think I would mount the engine temporarily and do all the firewall stuff like the throttle linkage, the mixture, the primer, if you're gonna have a primer, all that kind of stuff. Drill all those holes and get everything positioned. And then after all that's positioned, then you can start finding real estate available on your firewall for the battery or your, your relays and things like that. So, cause right now I had everything mounted on the firewall and there's not a lot of empty firewall space left. And now I'm trying to find places to mount you know, like the throttle cable and stuff like that. So I think it would be a little bit easier to do, to do all that first and then mount all the accessories. Now, speaking of firewall forward, I have some of the hoses removed right now just because I was working on the throttle. And then you can see this hole right here. That is where the mixture control will come out. So it was easier to remove some hoses to work on that. But the uh, complete firewall forward package from Aircraft Specialty is now complete. And it will be available on the website soon. And it's going to be available in two packages. One package will be just the hoses, nothing but hoses. And then if you want, there's another package you'll be able to get that will have everything else that you're going to have to get anyway. You can source it yourself or just, you know, buy it from the kitplaneenthusiast.com website as a one-stop shop, but it will include all of these little AN fittings that you're going to need for your, just, you know, throughout the whole system. It will have the, uh, this little block right here that holds your oil pressure and fuel pressure senders. It will include the fuel pump, which is mounted over here. It will include the gas escalator mount to the firewall. Uh, it just has, like I said, it's just everything. So it's literally a complete firewall forward package. You'll be able to get just the hoses if you just want the hoses, or if you want to source everything in one spot, you can get all the other fittings and fuel pump and stuff that you need. So uh, I've been working with Steve at Aircraft Specialty on this for, for quite a while. I think we have a really nice system built and uh, can't wait for you guys to see it. And it will be available pretty soon. Now you'll notice I have lens cherry picker back in my hangar because what I'm waiting to do is Steve at Aircraft Specialty is going to send me a complete firewall forward package just so I can feature it in a video and show you guys what's included and then I'll ship it back to him. Um, but I'm waiting to receive that because uh, again I, I, can, I can show you how all the hoses get connected, show you kind of the whole system and how it's installed and what's included. 
And then after that video is done, then I'm going to take the engine back out and fit these rear baffles. Uh, it's been on my mind for quite a while. It's not something I want to do, but there's just no way to fit these baffles with the engine installed. So I'll take the engine out, fit the baffles. Once the baffles are done, then I can put the engine back in permanently, connect all the fuel and oil lines permanently, and then just all these little things like this, you know, all the uh, EGTs and CHTs. I have a bag here that has all the uh, spark plug wires in it. All of that can get finished up. Once that is finished up, I will put the spinner and propeller on that I showed you guys before. And then I have the cow right here. I can start getting the bottom cowl fit. And one of the things I'm a little bit worried about with this cowl is if it's going to fit with a carbureted engine. Because on a fuel injected engine, your little fuel injector thing is only about this big. And then you have the little air box that goes on here, it comes up with your air filter. Well, because this is a carburetor, it's much bigger. So now they have the carburetor and then that air box that goes under here and then it comes up. And I don't know if any of that is going to fit with that cowl because this cowl was pretty much designed for a fuel injected engine. So um, that's gonna, that might be a major project trying to fit that cowling or maybe not. Maybe, maybe there's plenty of room between here and the bottom of the cowling. That's kind of what I'm hoping, but I won't know until I get that bottom cowl put up here and I can see how much room is available. One other thing I have to show you here is, again, if you remember on the previous video, I had run a wire from my fuel tank or the fuel sender back down here, but I forgot to route that wire to the back of the fuselage where all the other wires are routed. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to put them in this channel, but I couldn't fish it down through there. And uh, you guys had some good suggestions in the comment section of the previous video, so I do appreciate you guys posting those. But the only thing I found that worked was my neighbor Gordon had one of those metal I call it a snake, he called it something else, but it's basically like a snake. <laughs> it's just a piece of metal that you, I fished down in here, or actually I fished it up from the bottom up, and then what I do is I attach the wire to it and then pulled it back down through. So now both of the, on both sides, the wires are now hidden. They come down inside this channel and they go around right with the fuel line into the middle here and up. So <laughs> that was kind of nice to have that done. Those two wires are now done. The fuel senders are connected to the Dynon. And then once I do add fuel to the airplane, I can get those calibrated. On the bottom of my wing, when I was building this wing, I had a little cutout, you know, from about here, up, over, and then down. Actually, it was down only to about here. <laughs> so I had this nice little metal cover that went on here to cover that up. But one of the things I found out with using these steel braided lines is these lines don't really like to bend. And if you think about it, if the fuselage is flat and the wing goes uphill with the dihedral, the, the fuel line has to come straight into the wing like this. And so if I, if I just kind of level it like this, you can see the fuel line here, how it comes straight out and then it starts to bend up into the wing. So what I had to do was I actually had to cut more of the wing bottom piece out to make this longer and I made a new bottom piece. So I have the, the two original screws there and then I just need, to, I'm probably just gonna put like two sheet metal screws, one in each corner here to hold this. But then it's got this little slot for the, the fuel line. This side is a little bit bigger because there's a lot more coming out the left side with the, the pedostatic lines and all the electrical lines and stuff. And again, even this one here, didn't quite fit up into the wing, so I have a little slot right here. And when you're drilling these holes, I did mention this in a previous video a while ago, all of these holes for all of your wires and your fuel line and everything, when you drill it into the skin, you have to be really careful you don't cut into this longer on that's here. That, and this, this aluminum piece comes down to, I don't know, about right here or so. So all the holes have to be cut low enough that you're not cutting into that longer on. And what happens is that that's, makes it stick out the bottom of the wing just a little bit. And then you can see on the right wing, it's the same thing. I had to cut a little bit more of the wing out to accommodate the fuel line and then make a new access cover. And then I'll just put the two uh, sheet metal screws right here and hold that. Then I'll obviously take this off and prime it and paint it. And even on the bottom 
of my cruiser wing. You can see I have a big access panel right here. And right up at the very end, you can just see the nut for the fuel line. Again, that sticks down just a little bit lower than the wing, so I had to make a little cutout there to accommodate that. You know, a lot of you guys are starting to email me and ask me when are these going to be available? <laughs> because a lot of you have the brake line kit, or even if you just use the plastic uh, brakes that come with the kit, these still work perfectly. Uh, these, these ones are designed by Pete Nelson, and I got him in touch with Steve at Aircraft Specialty, so now Aircraft Specialty is going to manufacture these. So there will be a kit available that includes a bracket for each gear leg. And then you can see on the bottom here that these are ones I designed here. I had them machined out of aluminum um, and there's, there's a few that go up forward there. But the kit will have, these, these will actually be 3D printed um, from the same material as these. But we're going to have a kit available that's gonna include the, the gear clamps here and then all these clamps that you need for the bottom of the airplane to secure your, your brake lines to the bottom. So that is coming very soon. In fact, in the mail right now, coming to me, <laughs> is a set from Aircraft Specialty. So as soon as I get those, um, I'll, I'll, I'll lay them out on the table and show you them and I'll get pictures taken and put them on the website. So if you guys have already purchased a brake line kit, this will be a separate kit that you'll be able to buy that again will include all of the clamps required for the bottom of the airplane. But what we're going to do going forward is we're just going to include this kit with a brake line kit. Now obviously the brake line kit will, will go up in price just a little bit, but if you order the, all the, uh, the brake lines, you're automatically going to get all of these uh, 3D printed clamps for the bottom of the plane. Well guys, that is all I have for you on this update video. Again, my next step is just to get that hose kit from, from Aircraft Specialty. I wanna film a video showing all the hoses uh, so that if you do purchase the hose kit, you know exactly where each of the hoses go and you'll see the whole setup. When that's done, I gotta get that engine taken out, get those baffles fit, and then I can, I think, really start making some good progress. Well, thanks for watching everybody. If you want, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button. Somehow it does help the YouTube algorithm and it helps this channel grow. We will see you on the next video. Bye guys. Hey guys, check this out. I filmed this entire video on my iPhone because I got a new iPhone and the camera is just light years ahead of my DSLR camera. <laughs> so I don't know if you noticed the difference in quality of the video, but it's a lot better. So I got this little uh, tripod mount for the iPhone and then it comes with this light. Well, it doesn't come with it, it was separate, but I don't know if you can tell that's actually on right now, but um, I'll just turn that off. But it's got a nice little light on it. So I don't know if that helps uh, shine my beautiful face when I'm filming. But anyway, a uh, little bit of upgrades to the channel. So we'll see how it works on this video using the iPhone.